Good morning, Thrivers. Welcome to Thrive Bible Devotions. I'm glad you're with me this morning as we uh, we um, we explore uh, in God's Word here. We're in the book of Matthew, and we're going to explore today this um, the parable of the talents. And so, very excited that you're joining me. Join here with me today. Um, a great, great passage here. Let's let's pray and then let's get started. Um, and uh, I hope this is a blessing to you. I hope this is a challenge to you. Hope this is an encouragement. Um, let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning um, eager to hear your word, Lord, eager to get into your word, um, Lord, to to live our lives for you and to, to do what you have us to do. Uh, Lord, we pray that as we get into your word today, Lord, that you take it, you make it real to us. You open our eyes to it, open our ears to hear Lord, that we may listen um, and understand, that we may may look and then actually see, um, so that we may be more like you. Um, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Matthew chapter 25, we're going to be getting verse 14. We're going to read through verse 30. And we're going to read this entire passage here, and then we'll talk about it today. So um, if you're with me, grab your Bibles, um, you know, I don't know, put up on another you know, thing on your computer or your app, whatever it is. Let's read the Bible together. Let's look at it, and, uh, and then we'll go from there, all right? So it's here, uh, um, and he's talking about the kingdom of heaven. He says, For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went and once and traded with them, and and he made five talents more. So also he that had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug it into the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also, who had the two talents, came forward, saying, Master, I um, you delivered to me two talents here, I have made you two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also, who had received the one talent, came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered not. Uh, So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have, um, you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown, and, you, and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money into the bankers. And, I'm, um, and at my coming, I should receive what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has it will be given, um, and he who, um, I'm sorry, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness, in that place where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Man, what a great story this is. And, and, uh, you know, this is, um, you know, for some people, this is hard to hear. Others, this is uh, exciting. Um, others, it's a challenge. But the, the the story is, you know, he says, hey, the, the kingdom of heaven is like this. And so this is an example of how things are going to work in, in the kingdom of heaven. Uh, basically, you know, he says the master goes away and he has his servants. And when I think of this parable, I think, okay, servants are obviously, you know, I, I think it's best for that we are his servants, right? We... we we are Christ's servants, uh, the master's servants, he's going away. 
And then he gives each of them a talent. Now, a talent is a bit of money, right? Ten talents, five talents, or five talents, two talents, and one talent. Uh, I love how God is amazing. Um, and God just happened to name this type of courtesy a talent. And God just happened in the English language to also have the word talent, which refers to uh, abilities and that sort of thing. Um, and I think they both apply here really, really well. Um, God has given to each of us uh, certain abilities, backgrounds, um, talents, um, you know, whatever that is. To some, he's given more, right? I, there's people I look at and say, man, that guy is so talented, so naturally gifted. Um, you know, to others, you know, I look at him and go, okay, well, he's not as gifted, but, you know, but praise, you know, but praise God, God still give him, you know, what he has. Oh, guys, I'm really sorry about the yawn there. It is, it is. Again, it's four in the morning. Um, I really need to get a little better at not yawning. That's really... Maybe have a cup of coffee first or something. I don't know. Um, but God gives each of us different amounts of talents. And you know, I want you guys to understand something. It's, we shouldn't be sitting there hoping, wishing, oh, man, I wish I had his talents. Or I'm, I'm glad I don't have his talents. Uh, praise God that God has made you who you are. Right? God has designed you specifically. And, and so take joy in the fact that God has given you, uh, what what God has given you. Um, understand also that to whom much is given, much is required. And so, you know, those who God has given more to, and they, they, there's more on them, uh, it, you know, for to do that that they they're required to do more uh, for the Lord. The guy with the five talents, right? He, you know, he came back with five talents more. Um, he had, you know. He was entrusted with a lot. I had to had to produce a lot. The guy with two talents didn't didn't produce as much, but he got the same reward as the one who had five because he didn't he wasn't expected to produce as much. Now I know it's hard because you know I'm that, I'm I'm with you guys. I mean I look at people and I'm like, man, I really wish I had their talents. I really wish I had their abilities. Um, and that's honestly, guys. That is selfish, you know, that's um, envy, um, you know, that's covetousness, and that's not what we're, how, we're to, how we're to live, how we are to live. That, but that's how we think sometimes, isn't it? Um, the story goes on, so, you know, he gives them the, the, the servants the different amounts of, of talents, and, and they, and then he leaves on his journey, and he comes back later, right? And I, I again, that's, you know, God gives us, you know, whatever these abilities, these talents, these, you know, whatever it is in our lives, money, whatever it might be that God has given to us. He expects us then to take that and do something with it um, and, and, and make it more than it is. And, and that's the key, guys. That's, God has given you your life. He is giving you your abilities, your finances, all those things, and he expects you to take that and make it more. Um, that's it. to me. That's exciting. Uh, to some other people, that may be scary. Saying, you know, I don't know, man. That makes me nervous. Uh, to the guy with five talents, man, it was really interesting here. Um, you know, it says here. Um, let's see. You had received the five talents. Went at once. And traded with them. And he made five talents more. So also he had the two talents. Um, you know, it doesn't say how excited the one with the two talents was. But he also went out and made two talents. The guy with five talents went out at once, man. I mean, he was, you know, immediately he went out to go do something with it. And, uh, and he was excited to do so. Uh, the one with two talents, you know, went out and made two talents. The one with one talent, though, did not. And so... We we ought to be excited that God has given this to us and going to do something with it, right? Go out and, and make more of it. Um, when the master returns, the guy with the five talents had made an extra five talents and he brought it to the master and gave it to him. And, 
and the master was so excited, you know, was very thankful and, and um, you know, that he, uh, he says, hey, you know, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. I mean, that's exciting, guys. And that's, you know, he looks and says, hey, I, you, you are faithful with the little I gave you. Right? You've made it more. Um, you know, I, good job. Well done. Enter into the joy of the Lord. You know, um, and, and that's awesome. And the guy with the two talents, you know, he didn't, he didn't have to make five talents, right? He didn't, he didn't go out and have to do as much with his, with his, you know, with his talents. But he, but he made two more. And the master, again, listens, says to him, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. You know, I mean, and again, um, I will set you over much as well. So, so God gives more responsibility as we are faithful and good with what he does do, right? Um, faithful being that we, we continue to live for him in that. Now, the guy with the one the one talent, he takes his talent, you know, and and uh, he looks at this man, the master is a hard master, and he, he you know, he reaps what he doesn't sow, right? In other words, he gathers where he plants nothing, you know, he, um, he, he I mean, you know, he, he's, and he's nervous. What do I do with this one talent? And, and in this guy's case, it says he was nervous, and he, he hid it in the ground, and you know, um, put it away till the master returned. Um, and and I gotta say, guys, that first off, if you're afraid to use what God has given you, that's a problem, right? That that's that's not what God wants. Um, again, it's a verse that has been in mind so much, especially since I went to the hospital in March with COVID. Is that God? has not given us the spirit of fear, right? Uh, he hasn't given us the spirit of fear. And, and we ought to be living our lives in that way. But it's so, yeah, it's hard, man. It's hard when we, we look at situations and, you know, and it's like, that's scary. What if I'm rejected by man, right? What if I'm rejected by by those around me? What if I fail? What if I, you know, whatever. And we, we get fearful, and in that fear, we freeze, and we just don't do things. And I want to say, guys, this has happened so many times in my Christian life that um, that I don't understand why I get fearful. Uh, I mean, I've seen God move so many times. I remember one time... Um, uh, as a young man, no, maybe was, I was a teenager, probably uh, 18 years old, I would imagine. Um, and uh, I was at a youth retreat, a youth conference, you know, uh, probably you know, several hundred youth there. And uh, we were overnight in the hotel and, and I didn't want to sleep. I was up all night and I was talking and playing games. I don't remember the exact situation. But I remember that there was a guy with me and and the Holy Spirit, when the Spirit speaks to you, you know it. But the, the question was, Joel, you need to ask this guy if he knows Jesus. You know, if he's trusted Christ. You need to, and, and I thought to myself, first of all, fear, right? I'm not going to ask that question. That Why would I not ask that I don't know. I was fearful. I don't want to ask that question. I don't know, man. What if he thinks I'm weird for asking or, or whatever? And, and, and I argued with the Holy Spirit for about three hours in the middle of the night, argued with them. Oh, I don't need to, you know. I don't need to. I don't need to. And because we had a great services and 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 people were were trusting Christ, you know, left and right, and and it was really exciting. And I thought to myself, why would anybody, you know, if anybody went to, made it to that and didn't trust Christ, they're not going to trust him. And and so you know, I just kind of ignored it and I put it off and I kept arguing, arguing. I was taking my talent right and I was hiding it in the ground. And, and the master was saying. You know, do something with it, do something with it, do something with it. And, and I argued and, and fought in my mind and in my heart. No, no, no. Finally, after several hours, in the middle of the night, maybe two in the morning, three in the morning, I I looked at the guy and I said, hey, you know, and I just finally said, fine, fine, I'll do some of these talents. And I, 
I asked the person, hey, have you trusted Christ? Do you know Jesus? He looked at me and says, no, I haven't. And I was like, what? You know, I, I just, you know, in shock. I don't know why I was in shock. The Holy Spirit had been telling me all night to, to talk to this person about it. Um, and, you know, I got to discuss with him his, why he had not trusted Christ. And he made that decision there at like two or three in the morning to accept Jesus as a savior. And the excitement in his heart was evident that he finally made that to that step. The excitement in me was unbelievable. Um, and I, again, I was young. And when I was young, guys, I mean, I, even then I was way more afraid than I am now. Um, you know, <sighs> blew my mind. Um, I remember, I, I mentioned a while back, teaching Sunday school for the first time. And I was so terrified to do it. Um, you know, oh man, how uh, these these second graders, man, these kids are going to eat me alive. Oh, what if I don't? What if they ask a question I don't know the answer to? And 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 what if you know um, that no one uh, does anything about it? And I don't know, man. Mm, and we freeze. We don't do it. Why would we do, take the step of faith and do it? Um, you know, I, guys, I, I told you if you watch the first video here, this YouTube channel here, and, and doing these daily devotions, I was like that. Just like that guy again, and I, I took the talents and I was hiding on the ground, and, and God said, "Do this. I want you to do this, and and and, and teach, and and you know, great. I'm so grateful for the you know the the however many of you guys watch the video and learn something and get something out of it. But man, I was like, I don't know, man. You know, no one's gonna watch it. Um, you know, I'm gonna feel like a failure after this. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, there's better people to watch on the on YouTube. Uh, you know, I don't know, Lord, and yet. God is blessing in this. And, you know, but again, I was fearful, or I, you know, fearful about it. But over and over and over and over again in my Christian life, you know, after 20, some 30 years, uh, you know, serving Jesus, man, it becomes more and more obvious. And it's, I mean, every time. I don't know why we still get fearful. But the idea is, even in that fear, guys, we act. And that's the key. We don't hide it in the ground. You know, uh, the guy comes to the master the, with the one talent. He says, you know, hey, I knew you gather where you don't scatter. And I, I, you know, and so I hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But the master answered him. And the master looks at me and goes, you wicked and slothful servant. And that's how he describes the servant as wicked and slothful. Wicked and lazy, essentially. And and." and Guys, that's what he's saying, man. He's looks you wicked, you 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 lazy servant. You know why would you do nothing with the talents I gave you? What you know? What is that? That is selfish. That is silly. You're lazy and you're wicked, man. And then he goes and he he says to the servant, "Take that talent from him. Give it to the one who has five. You know, and cast this guy in outer darkness where there's wailing and gnashing of teeth." I mean, he was he's upset when we do nothing with what he's given us. You know, uh, he's, I don't want it the way it was when I gave it to you. I want it bigger and better and more. And man, we got to get a hold of that. Guys, if you're living your life in fear, if you're living your life and you're know, being lazy in your Christian life, um, you know, he's saying that's wicked. That's, that's, that's wrong. What is it that God is saying to you? Right? What is it the talents God has given you? Take an inventory of what God has given you. You know, look at it and say, all right, Lord, and, and take this and say, now I'm going to use this. The master, by the way, didn't tell the servants how to do it. Keep this in mind. He didn't say, okay, here's five talents. Listen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go out and you know buy and trade and do these things and make more. And you too. I want you to do this. He didn't do all that, did he? Now I'll tell you what, guys. He's given us the spirit. The spirit prompts us, right? But he's not always specific with his servants on it. Um, but we're expected to do something with. Take an inventory of what God has given you, and then take a step of faith and and do something with it. And, and watch it produce more. Because that's what happens. God. The word of God does not return void. 
uh, man, spread it, spread the word, um, you know, work for the kingdom, uh, do something for Jesus with your life. And that should be the challenger. Don't be the lazy, wicked servant, right? Don't be that person. All right, guys, I hope this was good for you. Um, I'm going to get going for today, but we'll do that tomorrow as we finish chapter 25 here in the book of Matthew. And um, we look forward to it. Have a good day and God bless.